Hello dear students. In uh, the earlier chapter we have studied normal subgroups and towards the end of that chapter I also mentioned that in the next chapter we will see why normal subgroups are so important. So uh, we will start with our study of factor groups and uh, let me just begin with a subgroup. So let H be a subgroup of a group G. For with every element of G, we can obtain a left coset of H and G. So we are going to look at the collection of all left cosets of H in G. And we are going to denote that collection by G over H, G by H. So let G by H be the collection of all left cosets of H and G. That means G by H is the collection of all such left cosets where you can keep changing the element A and obtain different left cosets. So G by H is the collection of all left cosets of H and G. Now notice that this is a, a fairly complicated set by itself because every element in this set is itself a set. So it is not an easy set to deal with. We will have to be very careful when whenever we are doing some operation or we are dealing with the elements of this set. So I will come to that a little later. But for the moment, I take G by H to be the collection of all left cosets of H in G. Now we are going to study factor groups by taking left cosets. But it is equally okay to take right cosets and do your entire study of factor groups with the help of right cosets. A little, a little later, I will tell you why it does not matter whether you take left cosets or right cosets. Now on this set, I am going to define an operation which will make this into a group. So let me first define that operation. We define left coset multiplication on this set by AH times BH. So I'm giving a formula by which we will multiply one left coset with another. We multiply the representative elements of the two cosets and we get a new left coset ABH. So we define the product of these two left cosets as another left coset whose representative is the product of these two representatives. Now the operation between A and B is going to be the operation that comes from the group G. So there are actually two operations in play over here. One is the operation that is there between the two left cosets and there is one operation which is there between the two elements of the group. Now as I told you one has to be a little careful while dealing with elements of this set. And uh, in a moment, let me tell you why. So, recall that in an earlier chapter, we have proved that two left cosets are equal if and only if A inverse B belongs to H. So, we have proved in an earlier lecture that a left coset AH will be equal to a right coset BH if and only if A inverse B belongs to H. So it is not really necessary that A should be equal to B. Even if A is not equal to B, there will be instances where the left coset is equal to the right coset. So if the left coset AH is the same as the left coset BH, there is no guarantee that A will be the same as B. This is the necessary and sufficient condition for these two left cosets to be equal. And therefore, 
Look at this formula that I have given for coset multiplication. This formula depends on the representatives A and B. So, and different, and we have seen that different representatives can give rise to the same coset. So, my question is, suppose AH is the same as BH. And suppose CH is the same as DH. Remember, this does not mean that A is equal to B and C is equal to D. But suppose this left coset is the same as this. This left coset is the same as this. If I multiply these two, I will get ACH. And if I multiply these two, I will get BDH. So, if I choose the same element, uh, AH and BH are equal. So, here I take AH but here I take BH. And here CH and DH are equal. Here I take CH. Here I take DH. So, essentially I am multiplying the same cosets. But in this case, I am getting the left coset ACH. And in this case, I am getting the left coset BDH. Now, what is the guarantee that this left coset is the same as this? My formula depends on the representative. So, I would like to make sure that the end result does not depend on the representatives. So, I would like to make sure that this product would be the same as this product irrespective of the representatives that I choose. And this is what we say, call as whether the operation is well defined or no. So we will now check whether this operation is well defined. And I will give away the game. We are going to prove that this operation is well defined. If and only if this subgroup happens to be normal. So that is the main catch over here. Our subgroup will have to be normal. Only then this operation is going to make sense to us. So let me just write down the result that we are going to prove first. So I will call this itself as a theorem. So we define coset multiplication this way and we will prove, uh, let me call uh, the coset multiplication as star temporarily, then star is well defined, star is well defined if and only if H happens to be a normal subgroup of G. So, I will prove that this operation of left percent multiplication that we have defined, this makes sense if and only if our subgroup happens to be normal. So, let's prove this. In the first part of the proof, let me assume that this operation is well defined. Operation is well defined means it is independent of the representative that we choose. So long as the two cosets are equal, it does not matter whether I use the first one or the second one in the formula for the coset multiplication. So let us assume that this operation is well defined and let me prove that H is going to be a normal subgroup. For this I will prove that every left coset of H is equal to corresponding right coset of H in G. So, take any element A in G. My claim is that left coset AH is the same as right coset HA. So, I am going to now prove that the left coset AH is the same as the right coset HA. And because these are sets, the best thing to do is to show that each one is a subset of the other. So let me start with an element on the left hand side. Let x belong to AH. Now I want you all to 
look at the videos on properties of left and right cosets. So I am going to be using those properties over here. I will give you the links to the appropriate video in the description box below. So if x lies in this left coset, I know that xh is going to be the same as ah. So the left coset formed by x is going to be the same as the left coset formed by a. Also, a is in g. Since a is in g, inverse of a is also going to be an element of g. And now look at the product ah times a inverse h. ah times a inverse h is by definition a a inverse h which is e h or the same as h. I am using a fair amount of properties of cosets. So if you are not too familiar with it. It will be a good time to pause the video, familiarize yourself with those properties and then get back to this video. So if I take the product of these two left cosets, I get H. Also, I notice that XH is the same as AH. So remember this uh, operation is well defined and therefore in this product, if I use XH because XH is the same as AH. So if I replace AH by XH, it should not affect the product. So, if I replace AH by XH, I will still get the same product because we are saying that the operation is well defined. Actually, everywhere in between the cosets, I should be using star. But I hope that is anyways obvious. So, now if I multiply these two cosets by the formula that is given, this will be x a inverse h equal to h. And I know that if a left coset is equal to the subgroup, if a left coset is equal to the subgroup, then this element has to belong to that subgroup. So, this element is going to belong to that subgroup and therefore, this element is going to look like some small h where h lies in capital H. And now let me post multiply by a and allow me the liberty to uh, skip a few steps. Post multiply by a, we'll get x is equal to h a. So x looks like a product of two elements where the first element is from capital H and second element is a. So by definition, x belongs to the right coset h a and therefore a h is a subset of h a because I have started with an arbitrary element of a h and I proved that it also lies inside h a. So a h is a subset of h a and similarly we can prove that h a is a subset of a h and therefore the two are equal. So this is the proof in one direction. So, if the operation is well defined, H has to be a normal subgroup. Now, let's prove the second part of the result. And this is the part that is mostly proved in the classroom. Suppose H is a normal subgroup. Let H be a normal subgroup of G. We would like to prove that the operation of left coset multiplication, which right now I have denoted by star, but otherwise later on I am going to drop that. So we will prove that this operation is well defined. Now well defined means, suppose two cosets AH and BH are equal and CH and DH are equal, then I must prove that AH times CH is the same as BH times DH. So it doesn't matter whether I multiply these two or these two because AH is the same as BH, CH is the same as DH. This is what I want to prove. So let me just go on simplifying. That means we wish to prove that ACH is the same as BDH. And uh, refer to the note that I gave you before I wrote down this theorem. 
I mentioned when two left cosets are equal, I gave the necessary and sufficient condition for equality of cosets. So that means I will have to prove that AC into BD inverse belongs to H. So this is my ultimate goal to prove that the operation is well defined. I should somehow be able to prove that AC times BD inverse belongs to H. And that means I need to prove that AC, remember inverse of the product is product of the inverses taken in the reverse order. So ultimately this is what I wish to prove. Right? Now let me use whatever I started with. I know that AH is equal to BH. And I have also assumed that CH is the same as DH. And this means AB inverse belongs to H. This means CD inverse belongs to H. So I see CD inverse somewhere in this expression. And I also know that CD inverse lies inside H. So just to simplify matters, I will call this as H. So let CD inverse be equal to H. CD inverse is an element of H. So it is okay to denote this by some element of H. So this only simplifies uh, this expression for me. So now this A, C, D inverse, B inverse will look like A, H, B inverse. And now we use the standard trick of introducing the identi identity in the appropriate position. I am going to introduce the identity between H and B inverse. And for the identity I am going to write. A inverse A. For identity, I have written A inverse A. And now I split this as A H A inverse into A B inverse. And I already know that A B inverse is in H. I already know that this element is inside H. Now let me prove that this element is also inside H. Notice that a is some element of the group, H is inside H and now we use the most important fact that is H is a normal subgroup of G. So since H is normal in G, the element A, H, A inverse will belong to H. So this part will fail, the proof will fail if H is not a normal subgroup. I will not be able to conclude that this element lies inside H. So now to wind up things, this element is inside H, this element is inside H, H is basically a subgroup. So by closure property, this product also lies inside H and therefore this element is inside H and hence the operation is well defined. So if we want this operation which we have defined on this new set G by H to make sense, if we want this operation to be well defined, the key is that H has to be a normal subgroup and that is why normal subgroups are so very important. So this operate, we have spent this entire lecture in just proving that this operation makes sense if and only if H is normal. In the next lecture we will prove that the given set G by H with respect to this operation becomes a group and that group will be called as the factor group of G in H. That's all for now. Thank you.